Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Oriclopedia. Today I'm going to talk about cables, connections. So in the Auric uh, Atmos manual, uh, the British one, you have a small schematic uh, which indicates something very simple, um, uh, tape drive, TV, computer, and what goes where, but not many details. On the other hand, if you have the French version, you get a lot more things. So you got the same uh, picture here, but you also have a detail about which power brick, uh, which connect to what, uh, and as you can see there are way more cables compared to the British version. And a second power brick, and some other box which is actually an on-off switch, and even more cables, and yeah. So you may wonder why. Well, the reason is simple. Uh, British uh, computers generally use only the UHF, uh, also called the IRL, the antenna connection, while the French TVs were using the RGB. And the problem is that this connector here is missing one pin, uh, and the result is you need to add uh, a secondary uh, power transformer to be able to use the SCART connection correctly. So. Power bricks. Uh, typical uh, British uh, computer power bricks uh, from Auric International looks like that. So nothing special. And it has this uh, jack uh, 2.5 uh, millimeter uh, connector. Here we have the French uh, equivalent. Same thing but with a Euro, uh, Euro connector. And here we have a Norwegian one. Which Auric one with also this connector. So this is the main uh, first danger, is that it looks like a ZX Spectrum power brick. It has the same connector. The main difference is polarity plus on the center. On most machines, it's minus on the center. So if you plug that there, it's going to burn on your machine or the power brick or probably going to, run, to, to burn some ROM or RAM chip uh, or bad things. Another problem is this is the expansion port of the Auric. And since there is no on-off switch on the machine, generally when you want to reset the machine, you unplug and you replug and you unplug and at some point you are going to do that. And if you plug that here, you're going to put the plus 9 volt in contact uh, with the connectors uh, on, uh, on the bus, because this is a 6502 expansion bus, and the machine is going to burn. So my first uh, suggestion is make sure to protect that if you don't have any expansion to plug on it. Uh, if you have an expansion, keep it plugged, else you can put some uh, styrofoam, maybe some scotch, but if you have some uh, old uh, floppy drive, uh, PC floppy drive cable, you can just plug that here. Just one thing to be careful of is that not all the connectors have all the pins enabled. So I'm not sure if you can see here, but one of the pins here is uh, full. So if you try to push it down there, you're going to damage some of the pin here. And it has happened on that one once. So for the sake of the demonstration, we are going to have that one here. So, what's wrong with these bricks? Uh, well, they take a lot of room. Um, they have a tendency to, to blow up. Uh, you can see that the, there is bubbling there because this thing gets very warm. Uh, so, if it works, you can keep it, uh, but else you can replace it. You can find on eBay uh, microcomputer, uh, so they are nothing special, they are just a uh, normal power brick with a normal connector, but if you don't know what to take, if you don't have any power brick, you can use these ones, they are working fine. And while we are at it, you should probably also get yourself an on-off switch, so you don't have to plug and plug, plug and plug, plug and plug. Um, as long as it has the right type of connector. Uh, actually, that one is a bit too short here. It's a, it's a problem on this machine. But that works nicely.
Another problem is that very often uh, people get whatever cable they had around and you end up by receiving this kind of crap. So that one is a tape uh, connector and yeah, you have uh, three connectors and probably one is microphone and one is uh, record on one is uh, actually they should have three different sides yeah so that one's probably the remote control but yeah uh, half of the time they have soldering problem on, but that, that one is actually in okay shape many I received had suffered and had connection which been installed so that one goes to a cinch uh, type uh, drive uh, that one is also, as you can see, there, there is a sticky tape around uh, and yeah, the pins are half uh, not, yeah, the thing has probably been uh, twisted. That one is a 3 pin to 3 pin. Uh, it is probably very, very old. I can feel that the cable is munchy. That one is not actually too bad uh, because it clearly says here remote on microphone. But uh, if you need some brand new one, uh, you can go to the Retro Computer Shack and get yourself a set of, uh, of cable. Uh, the advantage of having a new cable with new wires is that they are better insulated. Uh, the Eric is already having problem loading stuff, so that may help. This is a typical uh, French set of SCART cable. Uh, so you got the desk pin which goes to this connector here, and you get a SCART connector, but you have this thing, plus 12 volt, which means you also get these things, uh, these horrible, horrible little things. Uh, so you end up having your computer with that plugged in it uh, and then you have to make sure that the voltage is correct and uh, the positive uh, negative thing is correct on um, on some the, these cables are, are not very good they don't have a uh, very standard uh, balance in regard of uh, resistors and things like that so on many tvs you actually don't get any signal at all it's not detected some other people made some interesting variants uh, involving uh, plus 9 volt batteries. Uh, you can see that one does not have many connections either. And yeah, uh, generally these ones tend to break. Some more uh, homemade uh, creations. The bottom line is, if you plug that uh, in a monitor, it may work because the monitors uh, don't assume that they have to switch to SCART uh, when you're watching the TV. Um, but on a normal TV, it will not work. So the problem is uh, that you get two power bricks and the result is very messy. Fortunately, there is a replacement. And I present you another retro computer shack so i'm not being paid by by them it's just that it happens to be the only replacement cable worth buying if you don't have one working and the reason is this thing is very smart contrary to the other auric connectors uh, first inside they are compatible with uh, ossc uh, the open source scan converter they've been validated uh, they work fine uh, but the smart thing is, instead of having a, a, an external power plug, this thing uses the Auric power brick. So basically, you plug that here, you plug that here, if I can do it, and then you use your normal Auric power brick, and it's going to power the SCART and the Auric at the same time. You can still do that, put uh, the power. Um, Put the on on switch you can even do that if you want and then you can switch on switch off the entire machine in, in one go
which is quite nice. So I made uh, an improved uh, schematic. Uh, I'm going to link the, the picture uh, in the description. So if you want to make your own uh, cables, you have the, the entire pinout. So this is the RGB output. This is the cassette uh, on the sound output. The printer, which is a 20 pin, uh, 2.5, uh, 54 pitch millimeter uh, separation, EDC format. The expansion port is 34 pin. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's about it for the connectors. I'm going to finish about the IIL. Um, so, most British TV in the 80s did not have SCART. Uh, everybody in France had uh, on color TVs at SCART because it was mandatory. Uh, you were not allowed uh, to sell a color TV without SCART. So, as a result, uh, most British games have been designed to run on IIL while most French games have been designed to run on SCART. And there is a huge visual difference between SCART and the IIL. I'm going to show you now.